Hello everyone and welcome to this session. My name is Valentin Toby. I'm a strategic security architect and in this session I will demo how the new F5 distributed cloud API security can strengthen your defense posture. Distributed cloud API security is part of the newly released F5 distributed cloud web application and API protection suite of products a cloud-based as a service solution designed to cover all of the WAP security use cases in a centrally managed solution with a low operational complexity. Distributed Cloud offers F5 industry-leading WAF and bot defense components, adding AI ML-enabled DDoS mitigation and API security, this last use case being the focus of this session. First, let's look at some API security challenges and how distributed API security can help. When we think about the critical functions API security has to perform, most often we think of access control, rate limiting, privacy, content validation and monitoring. One critical aspect often overlooked is API discovery. And this is important because you cannot protect an asset you don't know you have in the first place. One assumption, which sometimes proves to be wrong, is that the API definition for which you build your API security policy is a well-known reference published by your DevOps team in a format such as OpenAPI. The reality is that while DevOps and IT organizations are getting better and better at managing the APIs through well-defined processes, we are witnessing a phenomenon known as shadow APIs. APIs that still get published outside those well-defined processes and as such they are undocumented and live outside IT's field of view. This leaves a huge gap in your defenses that increases your unprotected attack surface. The first imperative in API security is therefore knowing all of your API assets, whether they are part of well-regulated processes or they need to be discovered by monitoring live traffic. I will quickly show you how to configure API discovery and its outcome. For the purpose of this demo, I'm using Swagger's Pet Store API front-ended by a distributed cloud load balancer. Enabling API discovery is extremely easy. All you need to do is enable single load balancer application API discovery option under the load balancer's security configuration. As traffic passes through the load balancer, the AI ML engine is learning from the API interactions and builds an API endpoint graph that can be accessed through the security dashboard by selecting the relevant load balancer. Lastly, you can generate and download the Swagger OpenAPI specification file of your discovered API. We've talked about building the API inventory as the first step in securing APIs. Now that we have the API specification file obtained either directly from the DevOps team or by doing API discovery, we will import it and create the API definition, which will allow us to build the service policies enforcing the API security controls. An API definition can be thought of as a list of API groups that bundle together one or more API operations. This helps you with the service policy definition. Instead of having to specify rules for every single API operation, you only have to create rules for the few API groups you define. Of course, the simplest of the configurations would be to create a single rule matching all your API operations. And conveniently, this API group is created by default when you create your API definition. Let's say we want to restrict access to your API, effectively hiding a part of it from outside users. Perhaps you have some sensitive operations that should only be performed from inside your organization. Currently, the pet store API is not protected, so you can see that when I'm using Postman to exercise the pet-related operations, all of them are being successful. Let's say we don't want to allow access to our delete pet operation. The easiest way of doing this would be to import the Swagger OpenAPI file that is missing 
that delete operation, create the corresponding API definition that includes by default the all operations API group, create a service policy and attach it to the load balancer. If we examine the rules specified under the service policy, you will notice we are allowing all API operations as defined by the all operations API group, missing the delete operation as it was not specified in the import file and blocking everything else. Running our Postman suite again, you can see the delete path operation is now forbidden. This would be a satisfactory configuration if the load balancer would only be handling API traffic and not a mix of API and web app traffic, which is a very common scenario. Since we only allow the API operations in our API definition and block everything else, the web app traffic is also blocked in this scenario alongside the API operations that are not in the API definition. Let me show you a quick solution to this problem. Again, very conveniently, the process of creating the API definition offers a solution by default, creating another built-in API group named base URLs besides the one we already talked about all operations. Its purpose becomes apparent when we examine the next service policy configuration, allowing all the API operations specified in the imported Swagger file, denying any other API operations not in the file, and allowing all other web app traffic. Since both these API groups are created by default when you create the API definition, this is a very simple policy to write. Conceptually, this is how the result of this configuration would look like. Now, let's say you want more granular control of the API than the two default API groups can provide. And instead of excluding API operations from your Swagger file, you want to have all API operations there, but selectively block some of them. For my next demo, we will assume you divided the API operations according to the create, read, update, delete model. The API definition process takes into account a specific tag, xVoltera API group, that can be used to control the API group creation. In this case, besides the two default API groups, the API definition process has created the four respective CRUD API groups. Let's examine the service policy I've created to take advantage of this. You will notice that we are allowing create and read operations, block the update and delete group of operations, block all other API operations not found in the Swagger file, and allow the web app traffic. Running the same Postman collection will show the effect of this method of access control. We've only scratched the surface of distributed cloud API security, but hopefully this was an interesting quick demo for you. Thank you for your attention.